Hello, everyone. Welcome to 2022 PyCon APEC. This is the largest Python conference in Asia Pacific. My name is Coco. Today, I am going to share a powerful, a charming visualization library, which is Bokeh. Uh, everyone know Bokeh is a visualization library, but uh, only few people know it can run in back end. So today, I will share how Bokeh run in back end. This is my topic. Run Bokeh in back end and draw real time charts to front end and make, make data scientists happy. Okay. Uh, let me just brief introduce myself. Uh, my name is Coco. You can just call me Coco. Yeah, Coco is my real name. Real name on passport. And uh, I am a Microsoft AI MVP since 2020. I focused on AI, uh, data, science, data science, and the chat bar. And uh, I am a lecturer in large conference in Taiwan, such as Costco, Dane Conference, Modern Web, and so on. Uh, if you are interested in connect with me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, besides Microsoft MVP, I still have some certification, such as Azure Solution Architect. This is an expert level certification. And the uh, DevOps Engineer, this is a expert certification as well. And I have Azure AI Engineer and uh, Azure Data Scientist certification. This is my favorite NFT. <laughs> So I put it in my profile. Okay, let's start our content. Here are our contents. First, uh, I will introduce and explain the dilemma of data scientist. And the second, I will introduce Bokeh. Uh, I will compare Bokeh with other library. And uh, I will uh, show you how to use Bokeh to draw charts. This is a live demo, and uh, I will brief introduce Bokeh.js. Bokeh.js is, is, is JavaScript, not Python, but uh, it's interesting. And the third uh, is our key point. Um, I will introduce how Bokeh run in backend. This is a time live demo. I will set up Bokeh backend step by step, and uh, I will show you how to integrate Okay, with other website. The last one is we will discuss some security issues. And uh, the, third, the, the fourth one is conclusion. Okay, first, let's start how, uh, let's start with the dilemma. How data scientists draw chart and their dilemma. Um, I know everyone here are data scientists and uh, maybe you have you have met this situation. Uh, you are, you are both always ask data scientists, hey, can I zoom in and zoom out so I can see clearly in this graph? Yeah, they want to zoom in or zoom out on the graph. And uh, hey, can you update this graph data real time? Yeah, they really want to re a real time graph. So yeah, it's a challenge for data scientists. And uh, another thing might be, hey, can you put this chart on the website? Yeah, we have our website and I want you to put out this chart to our website. Yeah, maybe you maybe become a full stack developer because you want to put your chart to website. And uh, can you, can you, lots of things. And uh, more and more requirements on graphs your boss always ask you to do that. And um, does data scientist need to develop website? Um, actually, this is a very tough question. Uh, developing a website is another job. Yeah, we know this another position. They are front end, back end, even for stack engineer. <laughs> this job is not for data scientist. But uh, sometimes you you, you are asked to do this. And uh, 
Should data scientists spend more time to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? Well, I would say no, because it, it will spend a lot of time to learn. Um, and um, you, should fo you should focus on your data analytics, your data scientist job, not, not spend too much time to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And today, um, Bokeh can help you solve this problem. And uh, maybe you guys have, have heard a lot D3.js. Yeah, D3.js is a very, very powerful uh, library in JavaScript. You can draw any chart, any graph you want. But uh, the learning curve of D3.js is very, very steep. You have to spend a lot of time to learn D3.js. So yeah, I didn't recommend you to learn D3.js, just to learn Bokeh. Okay, let's introduce to Bokeh. Um, I see many, many people here use metabolic lib here, and some people might use Seabong, and uh, I see many, only few people use Bokeh. Yeah, uh, here I will show you how Bokeh is powerful. So, uh, first one, Bokeh focus on interactive chart. You can zoom in, zoom out, you can draw it, and you can screenshot the chart with Bokeh. So, Bokeh is focused on interactive. If you draw a chart with Seabong on Metaplotlib, your graph is static. You cannot zoom in, zoom out, or select area you want. So that's the advantage of Bokeh. And uh, Bokeh can generate chart with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Oh, this is really powerful. Yeah, you don't need to spend your time to learn from and developing, right? It will generate for you. So it's really powerful and charming. And another thing is Bokeh can generate real-time chart to website. This chart is real time. It, it will it, the data will change it, and the, your chart will change. So it's a real time website. And uh, but the, the last thing is sometimes Bokeh is slower. Yeah, you if you focus on very fast, maybe Bokeh Bokeh is not your choice. But um, it depends because some sometimes Bokeh is faster than other library. So. Yeah, so I still think Bokeh is a very good choice. Okay, let's start our live demo. Okay, uh, you, you can see this, uh, this screen. This is the Azure Machine Learning Studio. This is the Azure Machine Learning Studio. This is a built, this is a built in service in Azure. Uh, I, I choose this, uh, this service for demo because it's building a notebook. You don't need to set up your notebooks on your uh, computer. It's, it's very easy to use. Okay, so let's start our introduction of Bokeh. Okay, so first we have to install it. So install it. Import system. Oh, sorry, not this one. And uh, Kanda. We use Kanda to import. Oh, install. Dash dash yes. Dash dash prefix. Fix. Oh, I didn't run it. Yeah. Okay. It is, looks like face sound issue. I uh restart kernel again. Oh, 
Oh, it didn't run now. Okay, we'll come back. Just restart the kernel, and it's is it is running. So yes, I just installed the bucket, and uh, yeah, it's already installed. Okay, let's start our journal of bucket. First, if you want to use bucket in Jupyter Notebook, you must use this bucket I O and uh, import output. Output notebook, yes, and uh, just call this function up notebook. Yeah, if you want to use bokeh in Jupyter notebook, you must call this function. Okay, let's start. Draw a very simple plot plotting chart. Okay, from bokeh. Uh, no, no, no. Plotting. Yes, import figure and uh, show. Okay, so let's prepare some data. Yeah, you can prepare your data just like a a a red. Three, four, five, six. Okay, and another data is y one. Y one is maybe. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Zero. And then y two. Okay, I just uh key in a red random and the y three. In a random number, okay. Here are our data, and uh, I feed and uh, figure. We draw our figure. You can set your title. This title, I just use a uh, how about pie count. I can demo and uh, X axis yeah, just put the X here and the uh, Y Y axis Y axis label just put the Y here. Okay, now we have our figure and we have to put the data to our figure. So first we can use figure line. You could figure line X Y1 and uh, maybe we can put label label here legend label okay first i call it the first and we can set a color color here uh which color or maybe just red okay and the uh, light width we can set light width Or maybe just two. Okay, I copy this. Copy, copy, and then put the Y two, Y three, and the modify the name second, and the third, red, blue, yellow. Okay, here are our figure. And uh, we just call, we just call show. We can just call show and put the figure inside. Okay, so we got our figure now. And uh, we have to draw it. Look, we can draw it. It's an interactive chart. And uh, we can select widget here. This is a ring in. 
we can zoom in here to see the specific data here. And uh, we can use this scroll bar. You can scroll. And uh, even we can save it. We can save it, you see? I have download. I have uh, I have download a uh, image here. Yeah, I just click, click save it. And uh, I can just return it. So this is what we call interactive chart. Yes, very powerful, right? Okay, we can demo another things. Uh, if you don't want to just like chart, we can combine it with other chart. Okay, so uh, how about I just uh, copy this? I just copy this here, and uh, I just make a very simple modify. So first one, keep it like like, and uh, the third, I use V bar, and uh, the third one, I use circle. Circle one. Okay, so uh, if I use light, uh, if I use light chart, so I can keep it, keep it with light width. But if I use V bar, so I have to change it. For example, I can, I can uh, assign the width. Maybe the width is um, okay, just one. And uh, I can set the button. Button. Button, why is a button? Button just make it little. Okay, about a circle. Circle one, circle, there's no width in circle, right? So we can just use size. Yes, here is just size. Maybe 10 larger. Okay. So I add show figure. Show fig. Okay. Okay, uh, the error is uh, the column must have same length, so I make just length same length. Uh, two, two, seven, two, 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 seven, two, 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 seven. So this seven. Okay, it would be good. Circle. What happened to circle one? Attribute error. Oh, sorry, it's a typo here. Size. Okay. Okay, so we got another chart here. But uh, we cannot see uh, the second one, right? Where's the second one? Maybe the second one is too thin here. Okay, I go back to modify the second one, maybe with make it 10. Can you show? Oh, I know, I have to put uh, X equal x here yeah because you have to assign assign uh, x axis and the y axis and the top equal okay it might work okay it work yeah cool but it's two <laughs> it's two width right just make it one okay cool looks better yeah so uh, so this is the very best use of pie chart Okay, uh, did I mention uh, uh, Bokeh, uh, Bokeh can generate can generate static file in front end, right? It can generate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So uh, now I show you how to generate this. Okay, so I just found Bokeh, plugin, import. Just import this set and uh, set figure one, and we can assign it. Just call index.html. Okay, so yeah, it generates, and uh, we can see here. Here is our index, right? And I open it, I copy the I copy the code here and uh, turn into my uh, turn into my index uh, and I put this code I paste it and uh, run on live server okay I draw the server here oops
Okay, you can see this is uh, in website. So I can drag it and then zoom in, zoom out, and then even save data, download it. This is a website. So that's cool. That's the power of Bokeh. Okay, this is a very brief introduction of Bokeh. Okay, let's go back to our slide. Okay, so uh, let, let, let us review a uh, key point in live demo. First, we use Azure ML Notebook for easier setup. We don't need to set up notebook on your personal computer. You can just run it in the cloud. And uh, we show how to inter... We, we know... We show how to draw interactive graph in Jupyter Notebook. And we know the best concept of bokeh. We know how to draw light chart, bar chart, and the circle, and so on. And we know how to export static files. Yes, we got a static file, and we can run it in browser. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let me introduce another thing is bokeh.js. Bokeh.js is another way you can develop with bokeh. Bokeh provides JavaScript library. Yes, it's a JavaScript library, so you have to write in JavaScript. The API is similar to Python. You can read document here. Okay, we can see picture here. This is a Python API. If you want to get a range, for example, you want to start from minus 0 0.05 and end to 20.5. And uh, it is a range in Python. And uh, in JavaScript, you can use uh, bokeh.range1 and the star and the end. Yeah, it's very similar, right? So if you know how to use Python bokeh, you, you can save, lot of, save, save a lot of time to learn JavaScript bokeh. It's awesome. But uh, I have to say, uh, I, I prefer Python bokeh because if you, I use JavaScript, I, I I just use D three js because D three js is more powerful is more um is more uh powerful and uh, more certificate to learn yeah so yeah I I recommend you just use Python bokeh okay so let's go to another section it's run bokeh in back end okay. Uh, you can, uh, you can run bokeh server in your server. Yeah, so it, it, it the structure does look like this. Here is our bokeh server, and uh, here is your app code, and uh, here is document. It will generate document, and the browser will access this document. And um, in browser side, it will use bokeh.js to generate this chart. Just like this. So you have to install Bokeh server on your computer. And uh, even you can uh, integrate it with data base. In your app code, you can connect with your data set, your database. And when your database get new data, your, your uh, Bokeh chart will refresh it and uh, Got new data and show new data on the graph. So it is it's a very useful to learn. But sometimes, uh, sometimes we we don't need we don't use bokeh just directly connect to database because uh, we sometimes we use a web API here. Uh, bokeh server just connect to web API and the web API connect to database. Yeah, it's a more, this is a more common usage. Okay, let's start our live demo again. So, okay, uh, this is my VS Code. Uh, in this demo, I have to say, you cannot run Bokeh server in Jupyter Notebook. You only can now run Bokeh on your server. So, just, just install Bokeh on your server. First, we have to install Bokeh, right? So just conda install Bokeh. See here? Yeah, terminal. 
Yeah, I, I just installed Bokeh on my server. Okay, it already installed it. Okay, so I can run Bokeh server now. Uh, here is my Bokeh app. This Bokeh app is from official document. It's, you can just copy it and try it. So if you want to run Bokeh of this Python, you can use Bokeh. I make it larger. Okay, yeah, larger. Okay, you can use Bokeh. Serve dash dash show and the bokeh uh, yeah this is app.py right okay so we got this one we got this one here you can just press 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 and it will generate lots of data here yeah it, 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 this sample is from official document this is a uh, this is a very simple sample you can run bokeh application in your back end. Every time you press, every time you press, it will generate data here. It's run on back end, not from front end. Okay. And uh, let's go to try another, another way to run bokeh. Uh, we can go, we can go to this directory here. This directory here. And uh, this is a document from uh, official GitHub, and uh, it offers some good examples. Okay, we can go inside, and here are some example. I I will I will use this dash. It's a dashboard sample. Okay, another way to use this is uh, uh is a directory. Not just call Python file, it's called directory. So it's bokeh serve dash dash show. Oh, sorry. I have to go to this directory first. Okay, so cd. Okay. And uh, example app. Okay, I go to here and uh, let. The comment is okay. So dash dash show, and uh, I I would like to turn on this app. It's called dash. So I just put dash here. Dash. Yeah, I just put dash here. Oh, it face some error. No such file. Okay. Okay, it seems like just a very simple typo. It should be serve, not server. So serve here. Okay, it's running now. I can show you here. Yeah, you even can build this beautiful dashboard with Pi with Bokeh. Yeah, it's very awesome, right? And uh, all of data you can connect to your database and. Uh, update it real time. So it, it, it is a very good example here. Okay, uh, I, I will explain this way to run Bokeh. We, I go back to VS Code. We can see here. Here we can see this directory. If you want to, if you want to turn on a Bokeh app with a directory, the, direct, the directory must contain a main pie. Remember, first we just call a Python file, but here we just call a directory. But inside the, di inside the directory, there's a main Python, there's a main Py file, and it will run. And uh, you can put some uh, template here, and uh, you can put some static file here. So, so now we know how to set up this, to set up this uh, bokeh in Back end. Okay, let's go back to our slide. Where? Okay, here.
Okay, uh, I just show you how to install Bokeh on your server and that you can input the Bokeh serve dash dash show and your Python. And uh, another way is Bokeh serve dash dash show dash. This is the directory. And uh, you, you can see the, direct, the directory stru structure will, will be look like here. You, if you want to put the ini initiation Python, you can put the in initiation Python here. Sorry. Yeah, this is the directory structure. You can put the initial type Python here if you want. And the most important is mempy. You run all your uh, scripts in mempy. And the app hooks, it, I will introduce this later. And the requ request handler, you can do some uh, handle, handling during the HTTP request. And the static file, SingYaml and the template is, uh, is just static, static files. So I don't, I don't introduce them more. Okay, so it's very important that there are two ways to run your Bokeh app. It's uh, just call a simple Python script and uh, you can call a directory and uh, there are lots of things inside the directory. Okay, and uh, we show a very a uh, very simple sample demo and then we introduce file directory. Okay, let me introduce what is life cycle hook. Sometimes you may want to excuse, execute code at a specific code point. For example, you want to run this code when the server is run or when a session is created. So you can, at this moment, you can use a life cycle hook. For instance, if you want to use a bucket server with a Django server, you need to call Django setup for each pipe, uh, for each bucket server to properly initialize Django for use by bucket application code. Yeah, it's a very uh, it's a very simple explain here explanation here. Okay, uh, there are four definition or there are four function inside lifecycle hook. First is on server loaded. Yeah, it's just on server loaded. When the server loaded, it will run code here. And the second is on server unloaded. Yeah, when the server unloaded, you can put the code here. And uh, when session created, you can put here. Or when the session destroyed, you can put the code here you want. So, so you can use lifecycle hook. Uh, to develop your your uh, bokeh backend application. Okay, now uh, I have to introduce you some uh, integration way with other website because in lots of situation, your company has have already an existing website. You don't want to build another brand new website, so it's very important to. How to integrate it with other website? Okay, there are two ways to integrate with other website. First is standalone content. The second is bokeh server application. Yeah. Uh, first the standalone content I have showed you. We can just use uh save and uh, we got HTML files, right? So it's a static file. It's HTML file. It's very easy to call. So it's not standalone content. And sometimes you can get JSON items. So the second is JSON items and the components. And in standalone content way, you can generate components. Uh, what is component? Component is a uh, div targeted. You will generate some, it will generate some ID and uh, this ID will assign to div. So the div can generate, uh, so the generate the graph and the chart. So, so sometimes we use components. We use components because we can assign it to specific div. Okay. Uh, another way is bokeh server application. Just like I'm, just like I mentioned before, it's a is bokeh run on backend. Yeah, it's bokeh run on backend. And there are three way in this way in the bokeh server application. First is application documents. This is the easiest one. I will demo it later. And uh, it, another is app session. You can 
uh, you can integrate it when session, when a session uh, build. And uh, the last one is standard template. If you use Jinja template, you can use standard template. It it is for easier to custom your personal your your personal design. Okay. Uh, I I sh I I show you how to use application document here. Okay, go back to my VS call. Where's my VS call? Okay. So I close all of this. Yeah, I have a very simple Python here. This is a. Uh, you can just server document. You can just import this server document, and uh, put your website here. Your 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 URL here. Here I use a demo. I use a demo site. We can see this demo site. Okay. So I run this. I run this script. Okay. I just shut down this. Okay. I run this Python file. Oh, sorry. Should be. Okay. Embed. Yeah, we want to embed this to our website. And we just run it. And uh, you can see here, we got a JavaScript here. So we can just copy this JavaScript. And uh, I put this in this, I put here. I put in a uh, embed HTML. This is a JavaScript generated from Bokeh. So I run this, I run this HTML in server. Oops, it seems doesn't run. Okay, uh, it seems uh, just a very simple typo here again. So I run it again, and uh, I, I got this JavaScript. I got this JavaScript and I put in embed HTML. Look, this is a fully HTML document here, and I put this JavaScript here, and save. Okay, and uh, run on server. Here, see, we can get this, we can get this uh, app, app document here. We can uh, draw this slide bar, and uh, it will call back. It will call back to back end and uh, calculate it instantly. So, this is a very good way to integrate your bokeh back end to existing website. Okay. Let's go back to our slide. Okay, so I have show you HTML files and the app documents here. So let's discuss some security strategy. Uh, for first one, you can add you can add authorization to your bokeh. You can just use bokeh self dash 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 module and your auth Python. Okay. Uh, another one is you can you can uh limit your bokeh server to specific domain. See here, uh, allow exactly origin to your domain. So you can limit it to specific domain. It's C O R S, right? And the last one is you can add a side you, you can add a, add a side key to your bokeh application. You can just uh, uh, enable this your bokeh side session so that you can ins you can ensure your bokeh protected by your key. So here are some security strategy. Okay, let's go to conclusion. Uh, what what we learned today? Uh, first, we use bokeh for interactive chat, right? Remember, I zoom in, zoom out, draw it, and save it, and. Uh, we learn the basic usage of Bokeh. And we learn how to use Bokeh in backend. And uh, the last one is uh, we learn how to integrate Bokeh in existing website and uh, some security strategy. Okay, uh, here are our conclusions. 
Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Coco. I am Microsoft AI MVP in Taiwan since 2020. If you interested to connect with me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.